Well, folks, after literally years of negotiation between the fan and the management of Steve Menzies, we have secured the great man for the show. Welcome to the fan. Vossi, thanks for having me. It's been a long <laughs> negotiation, yes. but we're here. We're here. We're, we're here back. outside uh, the, the, where you played your last game in Australia as well, which we'll get yeah. to a little later. I wanted to start off with a photo from The Seagull Has Landed, a book that was released in 1991 that backgrounds your rugby league history. A photo of the very first Manly side from 1947 and there in the middle row is your grandfather, Mackie Campbell. Like if ever a bloke was born to play for Manly, it's you, because that's your granddad in the yeah. very first game. How well did you know him and about his rugby league background? Yeah, uh, look, I knew he played um, first grade. I knew he played in the first of the first grade side in 47. And, yeah, we were very tight. He used to give me um, yeah, tips and, and uh, how to play. Depending on who we're playing next week, he'd, yeah. he'd run through, this is what you need to do. And <laughs> Yeah, he was going based off last year's game, mind you. Yes, sure. Completely different team, but... Um, <laughs> no, look, look, he used to love it. Um, you know, followed my junior career. He'd turn up to all the games, so it was, um, yeah, great to, great to sort of... Um, to make you proud and following his step. Yeah, all right, we'll put the book to one side. Yeah. I want to tick off a few bits and pieces, first of all. Um, Beaver Menzies, the first person to call you Beaver. Was it, in fact, oh. Mackie? Was it family or was it a friend or...? No, it, it wasn't. I think it was a, a, a football coach I had when I was first started playing, under nines, I think. Uh, he, he turned up and said, you know, you look like Beaver off. Leave TV it to Beaver. It yeah, Beaver. that's right. I have freckles and uh, a bit of a, a weird haircut. And, um, that's it just stuck and I've had it since then. OK, the headgear. I mean, everyone still knows Steve Menzies wearing the headgear. Was that something you wore right from that, those early days with Hubble? No, it was um, when I was about 16. I think we, a few guys in the team started wearing it. I thought, oh, I'll give this a try and, and whacked it on. Uh, I think three minutes after everyone else had it on, they went, this is super uncomfortable and threw it away, but I kept it on. and That was just part of me. Get, grab my boots, grab my mouth guard, grab my headgear, and, and that was it. Now, I've got to tell a story. This is a, a personal one. Um, in 2013, I covered the Rugby League World Cup, and part of that, there were games down in Perpignan. And I had an incredible moment, which I didn't take a photo of. I'm sitting in a, in a hotel, motel, in their breakfast room, and behind me is a picture on the wall of Steve Menzies in Perpignan. Yeah. I mean, how'd that happen? You only played the last three years of your career, and, and you're on the damn wall of a restaurant. Yeah, look... No, look, they're really passionate rugby league supporters down there in uh, in Perpignan. Um, they had the last three years there at Cattle and Dragons, and um, yeah, you know, it's they they enjoyed winning games, and um, yeah, you know, hopefully I sort of helped a, a, a part of that. But well, I take that as an extension. I mean, I think of popular players in the game. You're a manly player. People aren't meant to like manly, but I don't know of anyone who doesn't like Steve Menzies. That's got to mean something to yeah, you. Yeah, look, it's it's humbling. You know, you, you, you're out, and someone will say. Yeah, I'm a Parramatta supporter and I hate Manly. Yeah, but I didn't mind you as a player. It was, uh, look, it, it's nice and I suppose it's it's a reflection of um, you know, how you played the game and um, tried to be hard but fair. Um, and it's, yeah, it's nice to hear. The name of Cliff Lyons, um, much loved, much admired by league fans, was that combination. Lyons to Menzies. Something special. Yeah, it was. We never worked. Didn't really have any playing moves. I think there was one that he used to run across and that was the only actual playing move we have. The rest was just, where are you going to be, Cliffy? I'll follow you and if I see an opportunity, you know, I'll, I'll let you know if I'm going to be here and it's not on there, I'm going to skip to the outside or cut inside and literally just shout, this is where I'm going. And he'd look around and whoop, hit me, hit, hit me in the, <laughs> whoop, me in the chest. It, but it's, he, he never once sold me a dump. He never, um, you know, as a ball runner, yeah. I say this all the time, that. You're only as good as you can be the best ball runner in the in the world, but if someone doesn't give you the ball at the right time, mm. you um, you, you might as well be useless. So it, it, it was to run off a, an amazing player like that was was special. Well, can't talk about your career without talking about tries, extraordinary number, I mean, 180 tries. Uh, was that something even right from your junior days? Were you a prolific try scorer, or it just happened? Well. Look, I, I used to score. We, when we used to play you know, under nines and stuff. It was just the far. We played 13 a side on a full field. Yes. So you just pick the ball up and literally just run around everyone. So I was reasonably fast. So I used to score, score a few tries. Um, but it was one of those things that, like I said, your um, the, the way I, I played the game, the, the ability to to be where I need to be, to read things, to preempt things where the gap's going to be. If someone something's going to happen, you need good players around you to, to find you with the ball. So I think the better the, the better I got was with around better players. Now, while the number of tries is documented for everyone to see in black and white, 
What isn't is tackles. Now, I thought your defensive technique was as good as, and, and I look at Jake Trebojevic these days and I say, he's got the same technique as you. That part of your game, was that something you worked on or you were always good at defending and you love defending? Yeah, I was probably always <clears throat> better at defending than than other, um, than other things. My first ever game, I would, you know, I'd, I just went out there and just started tackling people's legs. It was just one of those things that you naturally did. Uh, and I was never a good ball and all tackler. Um, but, you know, that technique of going low and hopefully, bop, you know, knocking the ball out or, you know, I, I still think there's some value. I know today we've got to slow them down, lock the ball yep, yep. up. And, but there is some value in, you know, slippery conditions, get that shoulder in either the rib cage or into the ball and, Force mistake. Imagine the beaver putting one over here now. The boy from Narrabeen, the debuted in 93. Now it's come from off it to Beaver. He got it away for Robertson. He got it back for the Beaver. Oh! Steve Menzies has scored. Hang on. Oh! Menzies is over the yes. line. <laughs> Stephen Menzies has scored in the grand final. His departing grand final. 2008, and it really is a magical moment. This is it. This is it. everyone knew. This is it for Beaver Menzies, the much-loved man. Game 347, and you score a try on that big stage on a, one of the famous nights for the Manly Club. What was that like? Yeah, it was dreamlike. It was. We played 07. We lost the grand final against the, you know, an amazing Melbourne Storm, storm side. And this is, you know, 08. So my last chance to. To, to play a grand final, you, it's not like oh we'll get another chance next year. This was this was it. I was leaving. First half was tough. We got I think it was eight nil at, at half time, yep. and it was a grind. The whole game was a grind, and um, to, to, to get a chance to come back on, I probably wasn't going to come back on. Mm. The way the rotation was working, uh, and, uh, and Stevie Matt, I hurt his neck and came off, and I grabbed the helmet, and you could hear the crowd. There was a bit of a buzz, and as I ran on, they were playing the ball, and it got flicked out to me, and I sort of passed it to to Michael Robertson and I literally I thought Man, he's gonna he scored three tries I think he's gonna try and score four if I was him I'd try and score four <laughs> this is all going through my head and then all of a sudden he passes it back oh my god and he passed it behind me I'm still filthy on that day but it was a little bit behind me I'm just going don't drop it don't drop it don't drop it it was and then you put it down and the, the crowd goes up and your mates sort of rush in and I, I'm walking back and on the on the coverage I'm just sort of Shaking my head, it was dreamlike that we were um, in that scenario, your final game, 40-0, and then, and then I got to score a try. I can't, I can't complain, can I? The telling of that <laughs> is, is fantastic. Hairs on the back of my neck, standing up sort of stuff. That is wonderful. Another moment for Manly. Mm. One of the greatest Falcons of all time. Can we, can we revisit oh. that moment, 2003? Here's a mono. One head, oh! What's this? Bang! And down he goes. Still, we still got the Golden Falcon at the end of the year. I think we have a new favourite. Mario, he'd be very proud of that one. Well, well Ben Walker's supposed to catch it and then pass it. No, Sol passes it on. The walks is there. I'm thinking, this is good. He's going to catch it. And and draw me. So I'm sort of looking, where do I need to be? What's... And he just goes, boom, does the bat. <laughs> and it just whacks me in the head. Yes. Now, the rep career, New South Wales, Australia, there's plenty of highlights there. Give me your best one for New South Wales and your best one for Australia. Uh, lucky enough to play a, a 96 series. We won 3-0 um, with the same 17 players. Mm -hmm. That was pretty special. Um, you know, even Brett Finch's field goal, I was... 15 metres from him when he kicked it, and that was a that was a special moment. Nice. Um, For Australia? Australia, World Cup final, 95. We, um, now underdogs, no Super League players. Um, we weren't given much of a chance, got beaten by England, Great Britain, the first, first, and, um, first round match, and then came back and, and won the World Cup final, which was, which was pretty special. 2008 it ends here, but it's like another a handful of chapters for the book. I mean, it's five years later, you're still playing. I got Bradford, a, Bradford for a few years and three years two, at Two years at Bradford, Catalan. three for uh, Cattle and Dragons. Yeah. There was an option they sort of said, do you want to play again? As much as I would have loved to have played, it was it was time to hang the boots, to hang the headgear up. The people were saying, bonjour, le beaver. Mm. Le castor is the beaver in French. That's probably the only French I know, le castor. Post football, let's talk about, they're all dressed in the suit today. People need to know, mortgage broker. Your mortgage broker, been mortgage on for broker. three years. It's citywide, based out here at Homebush. I work from home, so obviously yeah. on the northern beaches. But look, I love 
helping people uh, achieve their dreams, buying property um, that they're going to live in for the rest of their lives and saving money on refinance. We were talking a bit of mortgage breaking earlier. It's a good, good profession. What about the television career, Steve? Oh, that's, that's on the up and up. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> no, that, Working mate, with the likes of Maddie Johns, Fletch and Heine, you've gone all places. You've gone around the world. It's taking well, you around the world. That's true. Well, Maddie Johns, that's that's a, a positive. Yes. Fletch and Heine, that's more of a negative. Right. Um, but look, we went. Um, yeah, we've been on um, you know, Heine's brother's farm with <laughs> cows, and <clears throat> it's taking me around the world. Actually, when we went to. Um, over to, to Whistler, we're yeah. over there just doing, um, what did we caught up with my... Um, it's called a junket, Steve. Well, was it, was it, we caught up with my cousin, Canadian Beaver. Actually, he was over there. That was, that was, have you seen that one? That was a good one. Very good. Anyway, it's, um, we've lost our train. Get back on track. I think when you said fold our chairs, they're literally fold our chairs. They are, from America. Okay, I thought it was like just, uh, we're just going to hang out and like some really nice, like luxury chairs. We're in these. Probably how we should just about end the interview, but we're meant to get something touching that pulls okay. at the heartstrings, Steve. Okay. Can you imagine your life without rugby league, Steve? What, what, how it could have been? No, it's been, you know, as I said, you almost played to your 40. Your grandfather played the first game for Manly. Rugby league was always going to be a big part of your life. Yeah, I've been so lucky to, to play the game and um, get so much out of it, and it's to, to play a sport that you love, and I would have been playing anyway and get paid to do it and people come up and pat you on the back and say thanks for playing and you just think well thanks for supporting and allowing me to do it it's you know, i've been very lucky my whole life yeah and rugby leagues give me so much the one and only beaver menzies there will only ever be one beaver menzies thanks for coming on the fan thanks rossi john through bound in menzies he will score stephen menzies